what's up, I'm Carmanco. We're here at the Telus Small Business Event for Leadership with General Hillier. We're going to learn some small business strategies from the General and also get some feedback from the people here in the room. Here we go. I would not presume to preach to you about leadership. I would simply talk about some of the lessons I learned, some of the values and principles that I believe in, that I've seen in action, seen succeed. So one of the things I do believe that you have to have as a leader is that long-term view of what you are trying to achieve and what effect you are trying to deliver. It's all about people as a leader and it's people who are going to make you successful. If you don't build a network of people and then enable it with all those things including technology, you can set yourself up for failure by not concentrating on those people. Presence, particularly in stressful times, back to those people who need the sort of comfort of you being there as their leader, Presence speaks loudly, execute vigorously, even if you've only got 40 to 60% of your vision and strategy and plan laid out, get on with it and put the energy behind it. Leadership in difficult times is, is something that certainly he's comfortable with and these are uh, uh, difficult times for a lot of small businesses. A lot of companies nowadays are looking for some guidance and direction on leadership, how to do it, some of the lessons learned, what can I do to become that much more of a, a competent and confident uh, leader. He uh, said a lot of things that I agree with, with uh, especially it's all about people. Because you've taken care of your people, they will fill in the gap for you. They will know that you're intended, they will know what you're trying to achieve. When you're looking for people that you want to be part of your company, of your organization or your institution, you want to make sure they're right because the wrong people can have a, a detrimental, a, a destructive effect that is out of all proportion to the one or two individuals that are, could be like that. So take your time and thoroughly assess each individual that you're considering bringing into your organization. That would be point number one. Point number two is that you want people that are attracted uh, to the organization and to what you are trying to achieve as your company or as your business. And so you've got to be able to articulate for them what your vision is, what you are trying to achieve, what product you are trying to deliver, and then get a feel back from them if this is what they want to do. Because if it is not, what you don't want is a square peg in a round hole or a round peg trying to fit into a square hole. So take your time, make sure the individuals that you bring on side are those that want to be part of what you're trying to achieve, and then realize that you really do just need to treat them as individuals. We look for values straightforward values. Give me a good Canadian with good Canadian values of honesty and integrity and loyalty and dedication and that individual can be successful in almost any organization, company or institution that you want to make them a part of. I do believe that you have to bring, if you will, a straw man in the way of values as the leader to the organization, but then the best way to determine what the values are that are important to everybody in the organization is to have that direct discussion uh, with the individuals that you are leading, with the individuals that are part of the company, and, and come up with an agreement that uh, this is what's important to us. Uh, this is what will make our everyday life happy, enjoyable, make me want to get up in the morning and come to work, make me want to get up in the morning, come to work and succeed wildly and do that all within the, the, the best uh, structured uh, framework of values that we can possibly think about. So uh, bring a straw man, but be prepared to work it and shape it and adapt it with the people that work for you so that it becomes your, in other words, the entire team's values, not just yours alone. Very quickly what happens in an organization where the entrepreneur uh, does things for himself or herself is that the people who work in the company uh, turn off. And so what you will get is that nine to five mentality. You will get the physical body of the individual showing up for work, but they will not bring with them their incredible imagination, their intelligence and their energy and their enthusiasm and all their great ideas that will help shape your company, make it more competitive and make you successful in the future because you will turn them off. So when you stop trying to bring them along, that's what you will get. And that's a pretty painful uh, price to pay for sure. Secondly, what you are also not doing now is developing the future leaders of your company. And so if you're going to be around forever and live like Methuselah did for 900 something years, okay, that's all right. But most of us are not. And so you need to develop the next generation of leaders who are going to take over from you. And if you're not developing them and giving them opportunity to achieve things, even though you could do those same things much more easily, etc., they're not going to have the opportunity to make their own mistakes, learn from those mistakes, improve their judgment, and become the kind of leader that you want for the future. In the 70s and 80s, or even 90s, a lot of our non-commissioned officers used to say that to us. Sir, you know, you get my body because you pay for it, but if you want my mom, 
mind, you really are going to have to inspire me and incite me and make me enthusiastic and make me get up in the morning and want to come to work. You do that, first of all, by focusing on people and realizing that you know, structure, organization, process, management tools, infrastructure, rank, appointment, all these things can be complementary and, and augment what you're trying to achieve. But if you forget that it's the people who deliver for you, uh, you will fail. So you can help achieve that by showing that people are important, that each individual is a mature, responsible adult, unless these are actions uh, tell you otherwise, and that you treat them with respect. You look people in the eye, you look for their opinions and, 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 and their thoughts, and you look for how they think the job can be done more effectively. You don't bring in middle managers, you bring in leaders who have management skills, uh, because that's who you want. You need to develop those or find them around, and then ensure that you have that same value set that you're moving, uh, that you're operating from, and also that your leadership team, however many levels you have, all of that same view of what you're trying to achieve in the longer term. And, and then you have to get an opportunity to step back yourself, uh, let those leaders feel their way through the organization, offering them your guidance as they go, but also leaving your door open so that when they encounter things that they don't believe are right or the correct way to do them, they can come back and discuss it with you and then proceed knowing that they have your confidence from that perspective. So I think you have to grow your leadership team uh, if you're gonna take advantage of all the opportunities that are out there in this great society, economic opportunities and millions of dollars, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can only do that by entrusting, enabling, empowering, and giving the right guidance and motivation to the leaders who are then gonna take it forward. All I believe is that I deal with people ordinary flesh and blood people, like I say, who have you know, aspirations and insecurities and concerns. And to then turn around and call those people, men and women, who have families of little boys and little girls, uh, husbands and wives and partners, uh, to call them a resource is disrespectful to them and the greatest uh, and the, the fastest way to failure uh, when you're thinking about uh, leadership is to disrespect the very people that you count on so much. And so I didn't like it. I never found the perfect solution to replace it with, which is perhaps why it still exists today across the country. It still uh, is to me uh, distasteful. Well, the next book is Leadership Matters, because leadership does matter. In good times, people want more of it, because they want to accomplish more. And in bad times, people are insecure, or stressful times, or dangerous times. People are insecure, and they really want to look to leaders to give them security, to give them confidence, to give them the faith to carry on again. And so leadership does matter, and that is the title of my next book, and due out in the next six months. That's it for me. I hope you had a great time and learned a little bit about small business leadership. Stay tuned for more great information to come at tellustalksbusiness.com.